Today is basically Christmas. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. So we are starting another building project and we are so excited. And this time we thought we would be super smart and instead of trying to load up all the lumber ourselves and try to plan out what measurements we needed, we were going to get it all done at home, ordered online, and then just pick it all up when it was ready. So we did just that, but when we got there, they lost our order, they couldn't find it, and then they thought they found it and brought it and it was the wrong order but this time it was lunch we were hungry so we walked across the street picked up some lunch and then came back and it was finally all loaded up well that took way longer than we were expecting but we finally got all of our wood and our supplies so we're going to unload them in our garage so right now we're just trying to clear up a space to bring all of this lumber and all of this supplies into our little project spot here in our third car garage so someday we will properly organize our garage, but that's not happening right now. <laughs> So I have a story that goes along with this build that really just makes it a lot more meaningful and have a lot more of a purpose. So growing up, I lived next door to my grandma and she had a couple acres. Her family actually settled the area. Her home was over 150 years old. And so this land was old. She had, you know, on this property, they had sold over the years bits and pieces to build neighborhoods. And, but she kept just a couple acres and on there was still the old barn, a couple of orchard trees, chickens, and a giant garden. And then kind of just like a junk pile. <laughs> of things and i grew up running around that property barefoot and pretending to live off the land i have heard people say that oftentimes the things that you loved doing as a child manifest into what you become as you get older i didn't really realize i wanted to live off the land or was what we call it today homestead until until after college i met my husband on the college and track and cross country team we dated, got married, and then rented our first little tiny apartment. And that's where I began to feel that pull, that itch to live off the land again and grow something. And so I got a pepper plant from a local parade and I was so excited. I put that little plant on our front porch and my mom gave me a big pot and gave me some of her strawberry starts. I was going to grow these little things on our front patio and both of them actually died that year but it was a start to the journey. Something else that I also started doing was I started to cook from scratch more mostly because our food budget was incredibly small and the best way that I could stretch our food money was by just buying whole ingredients in bulk and just make a bunch of simple meals from them. So I had no idea what I was becoming as I started doing those things. And if you fast forward a few years and after a few moves across the country, we were, we were still in school, still renting small apartments. And I had finally learned to master growing vegetables in pots. And I began baking with sourdough and fermenting foods. I had the itch to raise our own meat and our eggs so badly that I almost smuggled rabbits onto our tiny balcony just so that I could do that. But we finally saved up enough money and my husband got a job and we bought a house. This house had just under a quarter acre, but it felt like 20 acres to me. We put in a good sized garden and I started planting like crazy. Just after a few months of that, I started dreaming of rabbits, chickens, goats. That's when the cruel reality of the HOA and city limitations hit me in the face. Again, I almost smuggled rabbits on our property where outside rabbits or butchering were not allowed on your property and don't even think about chickens. So those restrictions ate at me for two years until fast forward a few more years to now. We live on one acre of high desert land with no limitations and again I feel like I'm living on 20 acres. So we now have three rabbits with plans to grow our rabbit tree and orchard and garden and berry patch and today 
Today, you guys, 10 years later, we are finally putting up our very first chicken coop. whole family working to get the foundation on our coop all ready to go. So what we have, Nay and the girls are shoveling up topsoil over there and then they're bringing it over to our coop where me and Rowie, Rowan are leveling it out, packing it down. And it is literally the most perfect day. There's no wind. It's like kind of a warm fall day. So me in my sandals, because if you know me and you've been watching the videos, I don't love to wear shoes. So if I can wear sandals, I will. But it was chilly, so I have socks. And you might think, well, aren't your socks going to get so dusty? Yes, yes, they do. They get very dusty. But let me tell you this. My socks get very dusty even when I'm wearing normal shoes. So I figured I might go comfort over style on this project. It was it was just too too beautiful of a day to have tennis shoes on. So now you know the story of our coop, and what else you need to know is that during all those years of me dreaming and wishing I could get a coop, I chose contentment and being content in the current situation that I was, even if it was just growing as many things as I possibly could on our back patio, I could. But while I was waiting, I decided to use that time to prepare. And so I spent a lot of days reading books about chickens, about gardens, about orchards, about everything. And so once we finally got here, I knew exactly what kind of coop would be the best for our family. And I'm so excited to show you guys that as we make progress on this coop over the next few weeks or months, however long it takes us we have some great plans in store for this coop and we can't wait to have you guys around for that I also wanted to give you guys an update on our winter our winter greens that we will be growing in, in our seed starting station so in our rental it was just in our hallway <laughs> upstairs but in this house I was trying to figure out the best place of where to put it and Unfortunately, I was like, in our basement, it's great. We have tons of space. It's not finished. But it's actually really cold down there. Except for this one room we have. It's our insulated room. It has kind of like our water heater and other things in here. So this room has outlets. It has insulation. So it's actually a lot warmer in here than in our basement. So once I got those seedlings sprouted, I brought them down to our dungeon of a seed starting station and they have already started sprouting. I don't know if that ever gets old. And if you have planted a seed, it's just truly amazing. Every type that little thing pops up. I'm so glad to have you guys here with us in the high desert and hope to see you all next week. Mm -hmm.